what's up guys, it's time for a follow up on last week's Fix of Friday. Uh, I have my benchmark results in front of me. Um, it's some pretty exciting stuff here. Uh, in case you missed the last video, we started out with an i7-930 i7 overclocked to 4 gigahertz, 4.0365 to be exact, uh, with 6 gigs of RAM. We've gone to an i7-980, the 6 core at 3.464 gigahertz, 12 gigs of RAM. I didn't really see how far we could push it. Uh, I just did a quick and dirty overclock to uh, 4.16 gigahertz, um, which is really just getting the RAM back to 1600 megahertz, uh, and then using the maximum multiplier allowed, which is uh, 26 or 27, depending on whether the turbo is engaged or not. Um, and it's very stable. Uh, it's not even close to the thermal limits of this thing. I'm maxing out around 70, 75 degrees Celsius, so I've got another 25 degrees to go and push it before it actually starts being an issue with thermals. Um, but just for the stability of the system and the fact that it's already faster than what I was doing, uh, I don't really see a point in pushing it past there uh, because this is something I need to work reliably not to its maximum potential, I guess is the best way to put it. Alright, so let's take a look at benchmarks. So looking at Unigen Heaven benchmark, our original run in Unigen Heaven was at 1777. Post upgrade, we went to 1764, and overclocked went to 1780 something. I can't actually see it because my screen's cut off, but you'll be able to see it. So whatever that number is, um, but marginal increase there, uh, and that's pretty much what we're going to expect in the game benchmarks as well. But you'll see that in just a second. Uh, one of the interesting ones is 3D Mark Fire Strike, uh, which we see a perfectly linear increase there, and that's because Fire Strike is perfectly optimized for multi-core applications. Uh, so you can see moving up to the 6 core, huge increase, uh, mainly due to that physics score, and then overclocking again, uh, a boost due to that physics score. Um, but pretty decent numbers there. Uh, so it's like gaming benchmarks. Not really a surprise here that it wasn't a huge improvement, because um, my GPU didn't change. Most of these games aren't going to use one six gigs of RAM anyway. Uh, let's start with GTA 5. Uh, starting with the 930, we averaged about 77 FPS. When we moved to the 980, it actually dropped to 69.7 FPS, which is to be expected because we have a lower single core clock speed. The single threads running at slower speeds is actually going to be a pretty detrimental thing in a CPU bound game like GTA 5. Uh, and then once we upped the overclock to 4.16, we came out at about 88.9 FPS, 89 FPS, which is marginal at best. Uh, it's not a huge improvement. The game's playable at anything over like 45 FPS. So um, It did bring the minimums up quite a bit though. We went from a minimum of 31 uh, before this upgrade up to a minimum of 47. Uh, so it does make it a lot more playable when you have those dips and, and things like that. Uh, it doesn't dip below a, a very playable frame rate. Uh, moving on to Bioshock Infinite. Uh, we had so really all over the place numbers here, uh, so we're really just going to look at the averages on this, and it's pretty much unchanged. The so 4 gigahertz, we came up 4 gigahertz quad core, we ended up with 90.3, 90, 90 uh, moving to the 6 gore stock, we went to 94, uh, and then to the overclock 96. So not 6 FPS improvement, and that big of an upgrade is really marginal, that's within my margin of error on these things, so no improvement at all on Bioshock. Yay. Next we'll move on to Metro Last Light. I did Metro Last Light Redux, um, which we saw again, four FPS increase across the board. Nothing to write home about. Um, I actually saw some drops in the minimums there, um, but those were literally just one-off frame dips on each of those runs. So I'm not sure what caused that. Probably my hard drive not loading properly because I'm still on a, um, a mechanical drive. I just haven't gotten around to upgrading an SSD yet. So. That's probably why that is, but I mean, the actual gameplay, you don't ever see dips like that, so... Yeah. And then last for our games is going to be Tomb Raider. Uh, not Rift Rise of the Tomb Raider, I haven't actually picked it up yet, so this is original Tomb Raider. Uh, which did not really change at all. We're within 8 FPS of all these numbers. So, no gaming increases at all across the board, more or less. So, the gaming benchmarks are pretty much the same across the board. I'm not really going to see any gaming improvement for here. So, to answer the question of why we're doing this, let's look at these uh, Cinebench numbers. Uh, Cinebench is a really good representation of CPU rendering power. 
Uh, looking at the quad core 4 gigahertz, uh, we pulled in a Cinebit score of 614 to the 6 core and then overclocking just bumped it up that much more each time uh, to we're in the 900s at our current setup, which is phenomenal. Uh, also, it greatly reduces my export premiere times uh, and you can just see how much quicker that is each, each run. And this is the actual time from when I hit export on Premiere to when it was done with that clip and it was uh, just a standard 10 minute segment or so. So like cutting out, cutting out 3 minutes of export time is huge, it's giving me so much more room there. Uh, it also lets me be able to actually use the system while it's exporting as well, whereas before uh, I was maxing out all 4 cores, all 8 threads uh, at 100% you couldn't use the system at all. Uh, with this current setup it's pushing all the threads to about 75% on 6 core 12 thread. but they're only about 75%, so I can still actually use the computer, use the web browsers, uh, all that kind of stuff, and there's no problems. So you really might be asking, what's the point of upgrading an old system like this instead of just building a new system? Well, um, I got the system from my dad uh, when he retired it from his workstation rig with the 930 in it when he upgraded to an X99 platform uh, earlier last year. Uh, and since then, I've pushed it out as far as it can go. Uh, run it to its limits uh, and it's really as far as it's going to go. Uh, so I was looking at my options there. My options are either upgrade to uh, like an X79 system with one of those dirt cheap Xeons and overclock the crap out of it uh, or to build a brand new system with uh, X99. Uh, and all of those options run about a thousand dollars once the system's done and built and everything. And I just don't have it. Uh, it's not something that I'm going to be able to do. But doing some research, I found out that the socket that I have is the enthusiast grade socket for um, that generation of i7. So bumping up to something like the 970, 980X, 990X uh, are all something that that motherboard that I have supports. So um, after doing some digging and some eBay research, I found that the 980 was the cheapest of them, uh, coming in at 120 maybe. Uh, which is ridiculously cheap. This was like a $600, $700 processor when it was new. Ludicrously cheap for what it is. Uh, and then to see performance numbers like this out of that like $120 investment is just phenomenal. Uh, so it's going to save me a lot of time when I'm working. Um, it's going to let me do a lot more with the system than it was currently able to. Uh, and basically it's just going to extend the life of my current system out until the point where it just won't work at all anymore. And at that point I'll be forced to upgrade to something newer. Um, but it is going to let me get as much performance out of the socket as I can before I have to retire it. And that's really the point. Um, let's just add that longevity onto it. Uh, I mean, granted, probably I will retire it before it gets to its end of life, just because that's the kind of person I am. But it is what it is. Uh, anyway, let's gonna wrap it up for now. Uh, hit like if you like it, get subscribed if not already, and I'll see you in the next one.